The year is 2016. The Central African Republic is divided into two zones. The northern part of the country is ruled by Muslim Seleka militias, while the southwestern part is ruled by a group of animistic militias of Fonsi Balakas, claiming to be immune to bullets due to magic. UN peacekeepers and soldiers are mostly confined to their bases and unable to stop armed groups from committing atrocities. In the past three years, the entire southwestern part of the country has been cleansed from all Muslims in a series of massacres by Ansi Balaka. Entire? No, inside the capital city, 300 kilometers from the front line, in one district just near the city center, a group of around 15,000 Muslims managed to survive for years, protected by around 200 armed Seleka militia. Unable to move anywhere, they were sitting on their guns and ammunition, preventing all soldiers and peacekeepers from entering any part of the district. Tired of waiting, in August of that year, three leaders of the armed groups, Abdullah Sen, Arun Gai and Amati Jani, decided to take a risk and attempt to leave the besieged district. They were separated from the rebel-controlled territory by 330 kilometers, three cities and multiple checkpoints manned by soldiers, UN peacekeepers and anti balaka militiamen. They had only one chance to do it, and they took it on the 12th of August. In the evening of that day, 35 militiamen gathered on the Kilometer 5 street. They embarked on seven vehicles, painted white to resemble those of UN peacekeepers. Each one of them was armed with automatic rifles, heavy machine guns, rocket launchers and grenades. They were ready to destroy everyone who stood in their way to freedom, or die trying. At 8 p.m. the convoy left the Muslim district, and one hour later, it arrived at the residence of John Abba, friend of Isen, the leader of the escapees. For half an hour, he tried to convince him to join him, but he refused. Finally, they left and headed north. Twelve kilometers from the center of the capital, they were stopped by the gendarmes at the checkpoint. A little footnote here. Gendarmes are law enforcers between regular police officers and the military in French-speaking countries. One of those gendarmes asked them what the purpose of their travel was, while the other one tried to inspect the fourth vehicle. Suddenly the first vehicle drove at full speed, breaking the road barrier. At the same time, other vehicles opened fire in all directions, causing all gendarmes and soldiers in the area to flee. One militiaman fell from his vehicle and was promptly captured. Little did they know, one young shopkeeper saw them and instantly gave a call to anti balaka fighters in the next city on their road, Damara. From Bangui, they continued and interrupted, except at one checkpoint outside the city. Isen was asked where he was driving and responded that he was going to raise awareness about disarmament. Quite unusual, considering all the weapons he was armed with. Nevertheless, he was granted free passage. We can guess the soldier didn't want to ask a group of angry armed men any further questions. When they arrived in Damara, they were met by local anti balaka fighters, as well as gendarmes who followed them from Bangui. After one hour of gunfire, they managed to overpower the defenders and continue their journey. One fighter was killed in combat, another fell from his vehicle and was instantly killed on the ground by anti balaka fighters. In Damara city, they were able to stop for a short break and repair tires in all vehicles but one. Local UN peacekeepers sent one vehicle but decided the intervention was too risky, so they gave up and allowed the convoy to continue its journey to Cebu. 40 kilometers from Sibut at 5 a.m., they were met by French paratroopers. Alerted by the group's presence in Damara, the French arrived to stop them. For a few hours they negotiated. The French demanded they hand over all their weapons, while the Seleka militia wanted to keep their guns to defend themselves against anti balakas After five hours of negotiations, a helicopter of Burundian peacekeepers arrived at the scene. Panicked, Seleka fighters left their vehicles and started running away into the bush, Peacekeepers instantly started chasing them. During intense fighting, 11 fighters were captured. Between 4 and 12 were killed. A small group of fugitives led by Sen and Guy managed to escape and were heading north towards Kagabandoro. Chased by UN helicopters and Nancy Balaka fighters along the way, they were forced to scavenge for food and kidnap local residents to ask them for directions. On the 3rd of September, around six militiamen arrived in a village just near Dekoa. When they tried to kidnap local civilians again, the locals attacked back. Two civilians and one fighter were killed in the clash. 
not wasting any time, they headed north, where a group of Seleka fighters from Kagebandora arrived on motorcycles to pick them up. They exchanged fire with local peacekeepers, wounding two blue helmets. Nevertheless, they managed to join their fellow fighters, and finally, in early September, the group, now greatly reduced from initial 35 members, reached rebel headquarters in Ndele. Out of 35 rebels who left Bangui on the 12th of August, at least 12 were killed, 16 were captured, and 11 of them were sentenced to life imprisonment in 2018. Only a few managed to reach the northern part of the country. His son became a political leader of an ex seleka group, but eventually he laid down arms and joined the government. Guy fled the country to Sudan after a failed rebellion, where he was last seen in 2022. The Muslim district in Bangui eventually surrendered in 2020, after six years of siege. Thank you for watching. This was Demet, voicing the video at the request of Boris, and see you later.